And then uh, I'm going on YouTube. It did take a few seconds. Okay. This is to be sure that after that I can. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Just one second more. Okay. Uh, everybody, nice to see so many uh, great uh, people. Uh, so this is uh, the beginning of uh, this uh, conference. If uh, everything uh, happens more or less like we want, it will last uh, for uh, about uh, four hours. And at the end, uh, we will uh, have a uh, um, kind of uh, um, approach of uh, many uh, interesting proposals that you can already uh, see on the link that uh, uh, David uh, uh, show you uh, in the chat. Um, so uh, I said already, the one of the ideas today is to uh, discuss about proposals. Uh, and of course, uh, we uh, are going to speak about these proposals now and maybe also later. And, now, uh, and there is only one thing where we will be very strict, is to stop people uh, if they uh, go ahead of the time that is decided. So four minutes for each speaker and then 100 seconds for the second uh, uh, part of the discussion. But uh, now I give the word for, uh, to David for a little bit more explanation about, let's say, technical aspects. Welcome, everybody. So it's great to see so many people. This is going to be interesting just to hear people giving updates about some of the activities they've been involved with. People maybe we don't normally hear from, and unexpected angles from people we already think we know. But it's going to be more interesting than that because we're going to ask everybody to consider voting for the different proposals that will be discussed. And we are giving each person five votes. And we're going to ask you to spread your five votes around all the proposals you'll hear. And this is impossibly hard because I've looked at all the proposals and they all deserve votes. But uh, to make it interesting, we're going to ask that you spread your five votes. You, if you are very keen, you can give all your five votes to one person or you can give uh, five to different people or three and two. You're not voting for presentations. You're voting for what's actually written in the proposals. So bear that in mind. Right, and we'll say more about the voting later. You don't vote now, but you might keep some notes. If something particularly inspires you, you might uh, record that because you would otherwise, since we're all humanity minus in some ways, we might forget the inspiration we had earlier. Mark. Oh, Thank you, you. Uh, David. Uh, for me, a, a very quick uh, word, just say you that I, we are very happy to welcome and very this small conference organized by I have to techno prog, but especially and mainly by uh, Didier Kernel with the great help of uh, uh, David uh, Wood. As you have understood, uh, the, the, the idea is both to have the, a quick overview of the diversity of our movement, but also the, the, uh, the quickly gather some uh, key ideas. And I think that already the set of proposals received is, is very encouraging. I just say once, uh, once more a word uh, and announce uh, first times uh, to you that it could be an in, something like an, an introduction to uh, something we are pro um, pr preparing for the end of the of the year because uh, uh, we are uh, on to, to present you the next transvision event maybe in Paris in November but uh, uh, we were talking about that uh, um, all the time. So now the the floor is yours. We are we we beginning with uh, alphabetical order, uh, I think. So uh, we have to, to check the list uh, for an A. The first speaker have to be, I think, Adam Ford from Australia. 
Is Adam is here? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh no, this is Andrew. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be first, but I should have drunk a cup of coffee because yes. it's 3.10 a.m. Um, so, yeah, please forgive my slurriness. I, I don't think I'm in a fit um, state to be a, a public speaker, but I will. Um, so what am I only speaking for four minutes? Is that right? Four minutes, that's right. Starting yes. from now. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to be talking about uh, achieving dynamic goodness through um, machine understanding. Um, and, well, okay, by way of introduction, AI, I think, is becoming increasingly powerful in its predictive accuracy, though it's missing important aspects of intelligence that I don't think um, is recognized. Uh, it doesn't seem to understand stuff underneath the hood. Uh, in, in a way that uh, um, humans do, at least. Uh, a major aspect of understanding is causal um, and understanding it is extremely important for having both um, efficiency and intelligibility in both science and ethics. And I think that if we can um, develop this causal type of understanding into machine learning or, or AI, then we'll be able to um, go gangbusters with both science and ethics and engineering. While well, prediction is about what our forecasting what might happen, understanding in its causal sense is about explaining why things happen. It, is, it used to be that one of those, um, that those who understood the fields of expertise, that is um, field domain experts, were also um, those who uh, were the best predictors. This is what used to be the case back in the day before computers and before large, uh, before there was a lot of automation with computers in contrast, AI has now overtaken human capability in um, predicting, in prediction. Uh, so in, in a variety of fields. Um, but under hood, it's not really understanding <coughs> anything in the same way that we do, especially the causal sense. Perhaps it's quite natural for us to believe that understanding would appear once we had um, a certain level of AI, like symbolic AI back in the day. We're still using it now, it's still useful, or sub, sub symbolic or, or neural nets. But no, um, the hard lesson is understanding didn't come for free and it didn't just emerge spontaneously. So um, modern state of the art AI, like for instance, deep learning is able to, to achieve beyond human level predictive accuracy via correlations across large data sets, large training sets. Um, this produces amazing results. And like, I think we're all pretty amazed and, and has been wowed by some of the results uh, that has happened over the last uh, few years. However, many AI experts often complain about AI hype and justifiably so. Um, they believe that there's false narratives in some cases undermining the real work that they do where the understanding isn't really in the machines, it's in the programs, uh, the programmers who program the AI tools and um, the people who are using these tools. That's where the understanding lies right now. Um, so it's a huge problem that the apparatus of, in, in AI, which generates predictive accuracy is a black box, opaque. It's hungry for data. You need large data sets to do this and you need huge amounts of com com uh, computational resources. Um, it's stubborn, it's prone to hallucinations and catastrophic forgetting and ultimately horrible at predicting explana uh, providing explanations for their predictions. Um, and so when this type of machine learning fails, um, it's really not hard to know when it will fail or why it will fail, because sometimes you, you can't predict- 30 seconds left. Okay. 30 seconds. Okay, that's that's a quarter of my talk. <laughs> okay, um, and in some cases it fails catastrophically, requiring complex workarounds for it not to fail or for it to fail, um, it, it needs to fail or degrade gracefully. So we need fault tolerance um, and boss machine intelligence, uh, machine understanding should be able to help solve. Um, okay, how many more seconds? That'll do, I guess. Many thanks, Adam. <laughs> so people can read more about your proposal in the document. Thanks so much thanks. for being here at 3 a.m. in the morning and get a, three gold stars for that.
<laughs> Do I get a happy set? Thanks. So by all means, clap everybody by in the window. And uh, next up is Angle Marchev Sr. Who I think is going to share a video. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, happy birthday to Natasha. Uh, some months ago, uh, during the Transvision conference, DDA had a very good idea not on, in Madrid to prepare three minutes uh, videos because of reasons out of uh, DDA, that uh, idea was not materialized. So I have the opportunity, I'm using the opportunity to use this video uh, right this evening. The main essence of the proposal is um, uh, I'm urging my colleagues, university professors, to uh, include elements of um, uh, ideas of longevity and transhumanism in every single university subject. We are doing that for years. There is some tips and tricks in that area mentioned in my video. More is to come in our conference in September, also mentioned in the video. And all of you are invited to participate in this conference. Many uh, did already in the previous conferences. So I am sharing the screen. Hmm. So did you see my text and my uh, video? That's good. You have two and a half minutes left. Okay. Greetings, dear fellows and colleagues, transhumanists from all over the world. It is Angel Marchev Sr. speaking from Sofia. Main event in Bulgaria for this year was our traditional 14th scientific conference held in September. Many of you did participate. In connection with the 1st of October, we disseminated our traditional annual statement on longevity and transhumanism. I hope all of you have read it. For many years, we are stressing on education as a key factor for dissemination the concept of longevity and transhumanism. I am urging all my colleagues, university professors, we are only 13 millions on the planet after all, to include aspects of longevity and transhumanism in every single university subject. On the base of our experience in the field of educational games and computer simulation, we are involving all our students in different forms of learning activities, planting seeds of knowledge. Every bullet point is representing uh, such a form of education. There is no time to explain. This will be a, pa uh, a paper for the next conference. We are planting seeds in a potentially very big field. Only one example, already started Engage.eu project, aiming at creation of an online campus for 100,000 students. There is 42 similar projects, and we are participating in two. At the end, all of you are kindly invited to participate in our next conference in September next year and to join us and follow us. Ending with the Bulgarian equivalent of this word, za nauka, obrazovanie, radikalno dolgoletie i transhumanizm. Живей вечно или умри опитвай. Вечността е пред нас.
it was my pleasure to speak to uh, Transvision 2021. Thank you very much for your attention. Actually, thank you very much for so your thank you. attention. And go. So and that's, that's your time up, I'm afraid. Yes. That was no, uh, no, great. It's, no, it's OK. Yes. yes. Thanks so much for that proposal. More details in the document. Next yes. up should be uh, Antti uh, Peltonen, but I don't think he is here yet. In that case, we'll move on to uh, Anton Kulaga, please. Anton, if you'd like to uh, take the stage. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, do you hear me well? Excellent. Okay, so uh, I am sharing my screen. Uh, do... Yes. Okay, so uh, a few words uh, first uh, from the situation in Romania as uh, I am living here. So uh, nothing was really happening uh, during last uh, COVID years because uh, I mean we try to minimize uh, uh, offline activities. Uh, we we had a relatively recent meeting uh, in our uh, meetup group when things became better. So you see a photo from this. And uh, many activists, uh, including me, moved to online communities uh, that we uh, maintain, like uh, longevity fellowship calls each week. So, uh, that's about Romania. In terms of Ukraine, when where I was born, well, I mean, their people are too busy with political uh, and war risks, and uh, also nothing is really happening. Uh, in terms of uh, the proposal that uh, I want to talk about, it has something to do with what I am doing. So, uh, I mean, uh, I am uh, involved in both aging research as well as some autoimmune gene therapies, and I do a lot of activism regarding longevity and uh, transhumanism and open source. And uh, the proposal is related only with the third one, so it's my uh, personal opinion and not related to what we are doing in lab. So uh, relatively recently, I got a grant of uh, thanks to Vita Dao and Gitcoin for one of my uh, open source projects where we uh, make uh, an open source uh, system that will uh, assemble uh, genomes, uh, annotate them, and also we are making longevity polygenic score and uh, uh, what I discovered when I started working with it that there are many taboos related with uh, genetics and I think it is it makes sense to address them so here I mentioned some of them and with color I showed that uh, uh, blue color is actually what can be possible uh, to be done by extending open source project I am in and yellow is what uh, our collaborators are doing. So some of the problems are uh, typical fears, even fears of smart people that insurance will, uh, insurance companies and other uh, bad actors can uh, uh, use uh, their genome information against, against them. And uh, I believe that we should think about positive stories, how actually genome information can uh, uh, let you benefit, not to be afraid of having genome sequence, but uh, to actually see potential benefits. And also there are workarounds for privacy, like genomes DAO that allow uh, keeping things anonymous and uh, private, uh, despite having things sequenced, and even get money from uh, like research uh, that you allow others to do with your genome. Uh, and the seconds. second thing, okay, the second thing is that uh, some people actually, there is this designer baby fears, but what actually discovered that uh, uh, it uh, may be possible to, we, we don't have it in our feature list, but uh, it can be, because parents can just use it to select embryos and it can uh, deal with some uh, problems, corporate problems and risks. Uh, and also, uh, I will skip this, uh, and also not related to what we are doing, but there are also debates about enhancements of uh, animal intelligence, and there are really 
creepy stories like Planet Apes and so on. And it's totally different from real science that you see on the right. And I believe we have to improve the public perception on it because we need more intelligent research uh, based on genetically modified animals to understand us better. And uh, in terms of cloning, similar concern is that like left is public perception that is totally wrong. On right, we see that epigenetic and environment plays a lot of role. And we actually have to uh, create better public perception of both animal and human cloning because uh, cloning what allows us to you actually see the difference between nature and nurture and also to understand how. Thanks so much. That's five minutes. So I've uh, muted you now, Anton. Thank you so much. That's uh, a lot to think about. And uh, next, uh, we're going to change the order slightly. We're going to give the microphone briefly to Jose Luis Codero, who is about to catch an aeroplane. So we're going to move to him uh, for a few minutes. Jose. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, David, uh, Didier, Mark, and everyone else. I am really thrilled to see this activity. Uh, I am in the Dubai airport. I was just for the inauguration of the Dubai uh, Future Foundation, Museum of the Future. You can see it behind me. It really is an incredible place. It was chosen to be opened today because today is a very funny number. It's 2202-2022. So the Emir of Dubai selected this day. This is an incredible place. And I was talking to them. They are interested in organizing a futurist summit. So I convinced them about transhumanism. So they are very interested in this. So probably next year, uh, we might have something with the government of Dubai in this incredible building, really, truly fantastic. Um, uh, so after transition Madrid last year, I want to organize this in Dubai and hopefully we can have it uh, uh, next year. So I can tell you more later, and I will be happy to see Natasha tomorrow. I am flying to New York right now. I am in Dubai flying to New York. So I'll tell you all the news, at, uh, Natasha. We want you in Dubai also, Natasha, to talk about your fantastic issues. And I apologize because I am in a public place, so I cannot talk too much. So I'm going to give some of my four minutes to the following person. But uh, even in Dubai, there are some transhumanists. So I'm very, very excited to tell you the good news. Anyway, so that's all from Dubai on my way to New York. So Natasha, see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thanks so much. Uh, great journey and great collaboration. Thank you so much. The next speaker on the list is uh, Armand Naketcha. And Armand is here, but his presentation is going to be given in English, I think, by Didier. So, Armand, if you're still here, say hello, uh, bonjour, but also uh, I'll let uh, Didier take the microphone. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Salut, uh, Armand. Okay. Okay, so I will speak with the French accent also about the African spiritualist site, a certain part to the reception of transhumanism in Africa. Transhumanist ideals in general and techno progressive in particular are of increasing concern to Africans. Their reception by them is not unanimous, uniform and unique. This is dual and obeys a requirement of contextualization within the African ethos. If some of these ideals, such as equal access to transhumanist technologies, the extension of the healthy lifespan, social happiness, genetic improvements, and artificial intelligence are perceived as conceptual breeding grounds that deserve to be intellectually harmonized in a pragmatic, pragmatic of survival, that is to say, a realistic perspective application, which reinforces the permanence of an improved human uh, existence. Um, there are other transhumanist ideals who are seriously uh, wrong. Sorry, sorry. There are uh, other. I lost my. Um, who are. There are 
Oh là là, souris. Euh... Euh... Oh, there are other tangible listeners who uh, uh, worry uh, about uh, Africa and African socio-anthropological architecture. This includes, for example, the idea of singularity, cryonics, longevity, and also the fight against aging and immortalism. The hypothesis of this dual African perception of transhumanism comes from an African intellectual encounter. Indeed, during the first international symposium on the question of transhumanism in Africa, organized from November 15 to 17, 2021, at the University of Yaoundé in Cameroon, we made a synthesis of the opinions, recommendations, concern and enthusiasm of a certain Cameroonian uh, intellectual class made up mostly of academics. According to a generally shared feeling, the techno-progressive variation of transhumanists could concretely be harmonized in a philosophical, ethical, axiological, anthropological, social, economic, cultural, and traditional African approach. For example, if longevity is a sought after ideally in Africa, longevism, which would aim at an annihilation of aging from an eternal youthfulness, would not meet the anthropological and cultural value of the idea of aging in Africa. That is to say, the idea that biological aging and cultural, uh, that is to say that biological aging of the body and therefore of age is an objective data for evaluating the capacity for wisdom Africa, of African men. This, in terms of the symbolis, symbolism of traditional African spirituality, contributes to stabilizing the foundation pillars of the family clan of tribe. Similarly, the technological singularity, which puts the advent of the cyborg into perspective, poses an existential problem for the African uh, and which revolves other, around otherness, finitude, and death. However, this three degrees theology as prohibitive obstacles, but rather as moments of a transformative dialect on the human and spiritual levels. I will now put the text also in the chat because uh, it's, uh, it will be easier for you to understand uh, maybe and thank you, uh, Amor, for this text who was trans and thank you, Deeper, for the translation. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much. That's uh, within the four minutes. Excellent. Uh, and next up is David Orban. And there are two of you, so you can argue between you which one gets to speak. I do that every day. Thank you very much. Uh, my uh, brain is appropriately split uh, amongst uh, so many ideas uh, trying to invade and colonize it. As a matter of fact, uh, my contribution to this meeting is not as much uh, a, a proposal uh, as an invitation uh, to techno-progressive uh, self-awareness. Uh, I am seeing uh, a trend uh, which is uh, somewhat uh, worrisome to me uh, of uh, so many friends um, dismissing uh, technologies, dismissing ideas. And I wonder uh, if we have the sufficient uh, uh, alertness to ask ourselves, why is that happening? Uh, my favorite tool is to ask who benefits, who we protest. Uh, we can ask this question uh, when we are led to parrot without checking biased positions against technological progress. Uh, smart people uncritically repeat arguments that can be quickly debunked or even traced back to incumbent interests wanting to slow down or, or even reverse progress that will uh, benefit us all. Let me give you uh, three quick examples. Uh, what about the batteries? Well, the electric uh, car revolution is unstoppable. Desperate to keep the internal combustion engine alive, incumbent interests are posing the question, but the question is moot. Battery recycling will be the obvious solution 
and itself a huge business opportunity. Example two, Bitcoin's energy consumption will destroy the world. Well, the global financial network of the 21st century obviously must be based on a decarbonized renewable energy like everything else. Uh, but do you really believe that the solution instead will come from the traditional banking system? Example three, billionaires escaping to Mars. We must stop them. Well, the exhilaration of our dreams, the open frontiers of space are worth the price of a few billionaires joining us on the adventure. It is not really likely that radical innovation in space will come from planned economies instead. Um, last example, solar panels can't cover the entire Earth. No, they can't and they won't. We will electrify the economy and increase the amount of power available to everyone per capita while freeing up soil to be returned to nature in the process. So we must always check our own biases and yes, my bias is techno-optimism. We must reevaluate our priors in light of new information and empower our thinking through the proactionary principle. Thank you. Many thanks, David. Lots to think about there too. Uh, thanks for joining us and you're well within four minutes. Now, next up, if I consult the agenda is myself. So. I will now share my screen and start the timer. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to be at this conference today. I will offer a few words about the projects and priorities of transhumanist UK and London futurists. The transhumanist UK is doing a podcast, an audio podcast, it's the co-host. You can see the episodes online on the Insight page of transhumanist.uk. Recent episodes have included a look at NBIC convergence, DIY healthy longevity, the biohappiness revolution, and transhumanism and the Overton window. If you want to feature in a future podcast in this series, let me know. You may have heard about the Transhumanism 2024 project of Transhumanist UK. The idea is that in 2024, there will be elections for several of the major cities in London and the Transhumanist UK party could put forward candidates and uh, in this way show a possible new future for politics. My update today is this project is on hold that is deprioritized for the next few months. It's a long way to 2024 still. There may be more news about it later this year. In the meantime, we are prioritizing a few different things. First, to accelerate an improved conversation about the rise and implications of artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence. And this involves partnerships with amongst other organizations, more to be announced soon, fast future and the millennium project. Another priority is to support discussions about aspects of achieving super longevity that aren't sufficiently covered elsewhere. For example, presentations on the radical idea of a younging hypothesis, presentations on a replacing aging, and presentations on complications from social trends that could either accelerate or slow down our progress to super longevity. But what I most want to talk about in my remaining minute and 40 seconds is the vital syllabus project. That's what you will read about in the written proposal I have submitted. And this is a project that's been on the way for a few months, collecting videos and documents that are highlighting the most important skills that everybody needs in a world of rapid transition and uncertainty. So I am asking people to help by collecting and curating videos or other documents that are free, with no access restrictions, clear, engaging, and trustworthy. 
You can read more about this project on the education tab of London Futurists. There's lots of information there, including an FAQ of frequently asked questions. And you can also find a breakdown of the syllabus into 24 top level areas, learning how to learn, and so forth. And you will find on there a number of example videos already, mainly in the singularity section, transhumanism section, landmines and solutions. So I am asking for people to look at this and contribute videos. This project's likely to last three years, but I want it to be valuable for the general public, people of all ages sooner than that. Thank you very much. And now I will reset my timer and invite Didier to offer his words. Didier. Uh, yes. Didier. Hello. Uh, thank, thank you, David. Uh, sorry, uh, I was not unmuted yet. Uh, I will uh, uh, share the screen now for a few a very short speech concerning the situation in in belgium but also in europe because you know belgium is the capital of europe brussels is the capital of europe uh, so about a few words about belgium europe and techno program so Belgium is probably one of the most uh, the most multicultural and multilingual uh, place uh, in the world. It's uh, the city where uh, FM 2030, uh, the one of the founders uh, of the transhumanist movement, was born. So Ferdinand uh, Esther Esfandiari, it was his uh, name. Uh, when he was born, but he took the name FM 2030. And it's one of the regions of the world where you have the most uh, scientists and where you have also the most uh, uh, medical doctors and uh, people active uh, for uh, health and for longevity. It's of course the main seat of the European uh, Union and it's probably uh, the more advanced place for studying the, the brain. There is this, uh, well, uh, the, Euro the Euro Europe in general, but Belgium in uh, specifically, uh, you have the Human Brain Project uh, in Switzerland and also with many people active in, in Belgium. But what we don't have yet is a goal of a public institution to defeat or even to slow down aging. Probably today we will be speaking about uh, some initiatives uh, in the world, like uh, AltoSlap, like uh, Google Calico, but at the public level, nothing yet. And there is not yet awareness that old age is the number one killer, the number one source of diseases, the number one source of suf uh, suffering in the entire world uh, today. Now, uh, a few words about uh, hills. So, Reels in organization uh, only focused on uh, longevity. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, we are doing uh, the Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging uh, each two years. Well, it was each two years before COVID-19. We hope to try to make it again uh, in 2022 or on uh, November. We are organizing uh, conferences online and we are supporting experiments on the blood. Uh, with uh, with uh, old female rats, but this is not uh, el not everything. We are also uh, producing uh, each uh, month uh, a newsletter, an electronic newsletter, the date of death, in French, English, Spanish, German, German, and not German, <laughs> and Dutch. Uh, there is also the monthly scientific news produced uh, each month. And we have contacts with the press, with stakeholders, and we try to uh, contact uh, European uh, institutions. We are uh, also especially following uh, how to raise healthy maximal lifespan. I think we have beautiful progress concerning uh, longevity in many domains, but uh, uh, concerning the maximal lifespan, 
this is still not increasing. Increase this uh, is how to favor human clinical tests on aging and also how to favor the uh, fastest, uh, faster research on uh, drugs concerning longevity and also concerning gene therapies. 20 seconds. So, uh, I don't, yes, I don't have time more. I have only 12 seconds left, uh, so to give you the main uh, website, uh, uh, so Hills uh, Longevity Alliance, and also uh, I'm a member of the uh, Board of Humanity Plus. Natasha will maybe speak more about this. And uh, don't forget to write me an email if you have time and if you agree or if you disagree. Thank you. Many thanks, Didier. So in case you aren't aware, the biographies of each of the speakers are being posted into the chat window. So if you weren't sure who some of the speakers were, you can uh, scroll up there, you'll find more information. We are now moving to Elena Milova, who has got a very interesting proposal for us. Elena, the floor is yours. Thank you, David. And um, first of all, I want to thank all the organizers of this conference. I really appreciate the brainstorms. I think that this is something that allows us to progress faster. As uh, uh, many of you know, uh, most recently I was involved with Lifespan.io and I was working in uh, media projects uh, trying to put together um, a media company that will be posting news and covering aging research um, as regularly as possible in order to educate the public about those matters. And I think that goes pretty well. Uh, however, I, I wonder just how big is the percentage of people who are interested in science or health news who are actually getting this information and whether we should now um, that we have uh, at least several media companies completely focused on this topic, whether we should move to, um, you know, maybe working with some other types of audience. Um, most recently, when I was thinking about this, I asked myself, what's the other biggest and most powerful tool that is forming public opinion about uh, specific scientific topics um, and such? Um, and immediately the answer was, it's art. Art is a natural medium that is um, expected and is supposed to question and challenge the status quo to allow new models of thinking, to bring new ideas for uh, the public consideration, to inspire. And quite often, as you may know, science, uh, science fiction becomes uh, the foundation for actually working in the direction of uh, you know, producing new uh, technologies and putting together some innovations and you know, um, new, new um, ideas emerge as uh, something practical. So uh, my proposal is quite simple. I spoke with many um, uh, art people uh, from our field, uh, movie directors and others, and it seems like um, they can offer a lot to uh, promote those ideas. However, uh, one thing that they are lacking, obviously, is uh, uh, the support, the, the funding. For instance, I spoke yesterday, just yesterday, with uh, Tim Mopin, who, uh, as you already know, is working on a movie, The Last Generation to Die. And, uh, you know, obviously he would appreciate a little bit more attention to his project. But there are many projects of this kind, many movie directors, uh, very capable people who, are, uh, who can put together inspirational uh, movies um, representing life extension in a positive way that can you know, engage people much more, uh, turn their perception to, to something, you know, positive, uh, uh, help them ask for those technologies, expect those technologies, want those technologies. Uh, and I think this is a very um, promising direction of our activities as a community. So my proposal will be to start working in this direction. I myself, I'm currently putting together a um, new project. It's called uh, Longevity Art. And I'm going to have a, a YouTube channel where I will be discussing how the ideas of life extension are represented in different movies already. And also having interviews with people uh, who are working on uh, new art projects in, in this direction that are somehow related to longevity and such. And uh, since it's a very new project, it's only getting started. I really welcome uh, everyone who would like to collaborate with me on this project. Thank you, that's all. Thank you very much with uh, 20 seconds to spare. Great. I'll just remind everybody 
if you are listening, if you're not a speaker, you will still have a chance to speak later in the event after all the proposals have been given. Then after all the speakers have one chance uh, again to offer a quick comments, we will have a third phase in which everybody will have a short time with the camera, uh, short time with the mic if they want to offer their views as to something that particularly inspired them. So keep a note of that and start thinking about what you would like to support. Next up is uh, Felix Wirth from Germany. Felix, the microphone is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, excellent. So I will uh, talk um, about using uh, longevity parties to do advocacy for more anti-aging research. Um, in 2015, I founded with others a single issue political party in Germany, a longevity party. And uh, so far, we have already participated in 14 elections in Germany. And uh, the only issue of this party is that we demand that the government invests much more money into the development of effective medicine, uh, rejuvenation medicine against uh, the diseases of old age. Um, so in this short talk, I'm trying to convince you or try to convince some of you to also form a longevity parties in your country. Um, so because if, if we want to be alive and healthy in 100 years, uh, we probably uh, need to develop uh, rejuvenation medicine because um, other methods like, for example, uploading or so are too far off. And uh, cryonics, for example, it's very uncertain if it will work. Um, so we already know in principle that we can do something about aging with, with the repair approach, namely. And, but um, the repair approach now just needs to be implemented. And it's um, very complex. We need to repair a lot of uh, damages and changes that happen in the body over time. And um, so we need to uh, implement a lot of therapies. So, uh, so the more people work on this and the more money is invested, um, the faster we will have the, the anti-aging medicine. And uh, therefore, advocacy is so very important because we have to grow this movement to, uh, to do this faster. And uh, we, we also need to try to convince the government to support this um, because uh, the governments have uh, mo most of the money. So they could really hasten this a lot. And the, the government parties, the governing parties, they care about votes. So, uh, and to be reelected. So you, you, um, you have to show them that they can vote, get votes with it. And if you participate in elections with the longevity party, the people can vote for you and show with the vote that the big parties that uh, they could get votes uh, uh, if they would um, include this issue more into their program. Um, and also, uh, running elections is a very efficient way uh, to do advocacy. So, so uh, our party has already done a lot of advocacy with very few members and very few financial resources during uh, the last 14 elections that we participated. So, for example, um, you, you, can, you can hang up election posters prior to the elections. The media is interested in parties that participate in elections. And if you only have this one issue, they always report about this one issue if they report about your party. And you can, in Germany, you can air commercials in TV and radio for free if you participate. 30 seconds. Elections, okay. And um, your name is also on the ballot paper and you can do many other election uh, campaign activities. So um, the, the advantage, okay, I skip this. So um, I, I think it would help our longevity movement a lot if more longevity parties around the world were formed um, because we could also work together and it would have a synergistic effect. 
So we, we need to grow this longevity movement faster to increase our chance of being alive and healthy in 100 years. Thank you. Thank you so much. The more I listen to these proposals, the harder it becomes to figure out which are the five that deserve the most votes. That's a nice problem to have, I guess. Thank you. Now, next on the agenda was uh, Freya, uh, Freya van den Boom. I she was here earlier. Uh, are you here, Freya? I don't think you are now. If you join again, we'll. If she joins again, we'll give her a chance. Then next up would be Gaetan. Uh, Gate and Cell, and I believe he submitted a video which uh, Didier is probably going to show. Uh, Didier, do you have the video of Gaetan? Yes. Um, one, a few seconds to find it back uh, and then to share the screen. Um, just a minute. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Uh, and after Gaetan, there's another video from Gennady. So, no, it's a, it will be okay normally. Okay. Just one second more. Hi, and thank you for the invitation. Okay, and now I have to share to share the screen. Station to be a speaker during this event. My background is in video production. Can you hear it? I usually propose something. Make it large, please. Outreach. Yeah, is it, I made it large, and you you can hear it. I think yeah. Yes, so good. it is okay. Okay. Hi, and thank you for the invitation to be a speaker during this event. My background is in video production, so I would usually propose something related to the outreach of uh, transhumanist ideas. But I have been working for a couple of months now on a project around long-termism, which is a relatively new philosophical concept, mainly from the effective altruism community. And there are obvious bridges between long-termism and transhumanism. The main one is that both ideas recognize that the future of humanity could be far brighter than we think. Thanks to technology and social progress, future generations could live lives that are orders of magnitude more beautiful than the happiest person today. And we're not talking about next Tuesday. This is something that will play out over centuries and more. In addition, the lifespan of our species will be close to 1 billion years if we last until the end of Earth, or trillions if we spread throughout the observable universe. Which means the number of generations is just staggering. So this suggests that if you care about improving the world, your key concern should be whether the future goes well or badly, because this is where most of the value in history is located. Now, I think most of you will agree that the 21st century is a particularly dangerous time for our species. There are still too many nukes on high sugar alert. The progress in biotech could make it very easy for any biology student to design their own viruses. And we might see the emergence of machine intelligence far superior to our own. What could go wrong? A lot. And, and so the safeguarding civilization is key if we hope to reach this amazing future. There are already maybe a dozen research institutes which focus on existential risks in the UK and the US. They're doing amazing work. But I think ultimately, the more we see these kind of places, the better. So France is a big player in Europe. And I would like to see a French institute for existential risks. But not only, it could also include long-termism, transhumanism, and so on. This could help bring these topics more and more into the French-speaking world and influence policies, foster innovations, among other things. It could also be a think tank. Of course, I have no idea where to start to implement this. I just put it out there and someone with more experience with universities and the academic world could help, I guess. Um, anyway, thank you. I hope you have a great time during this conference and I'm looking forward to seeing the replay. Bye. Well, thanks okay. to Didier for presenting that and thanks to Gaetan for his video and his proposal. By uh, coincidence, the next two presentations are also on video. 
So Didier, you have to work hard, I'm afraid. We are now moving to Gennady Stolyarov, who can't be here because it's the middle of the working day where he is. Didier, are you able to find that video and share it with us? Yes, normally it's okay. Greetings, my name is Gennady Stolyarov II. Just a second, I have to uh, share again. Tell me only if you cannot hear it. Normally, it's okay. Greetings. My name is Gennady Stolyarov II, and I'm the chairman of the U.S. Transhumanist Party. I'm pleased to present a proposal to the AFT Techno Prague and London Futurists hosted Techno Progressive Conference to revive and expand upon the project of a computer game that was initiated in 2014 but unfortunately at the time was not pursued further by its original creators because of a lack of resources. This is LEV the game, LEV of course stands for Longevity Escape Velocity, and there was actually an alpha version of that game released back in 2014. It was quite engaging to play. One was in the role of a character who tried to live to age 200 by pursuing various lifestyle interventions and rejuvenation therapies when those kinds of treatments became available. In late 2020, I reached out to the original creators of LEV The Game and essentially offered to provide them the kind of funding that they were asking for in 2014. Unfortunately, they do not presently have the capacity to finish this project because of other commitments, but they essentially allowed the U.S. Transhumanist Party to finish the work. The issue is that while we have a lot of the graphical resources for the game, and we have the general concept, the code for the game has disappeared. There is no known exemplar of the alpha version of the game still contained on anybody's device. So we have had to recreate the logic of the game from scratch. And I took this opportunity to alter the mechanics of the game a bit, to change it from a real-time game to a turn-based game where every year in this hypothetical future, one's character has a certain number of energy units that the character can use on either various lifestyle choices, improvements in productivity, or what is called advocacy in the game, which can affect the probability of various world events or technological discoveries that can help extend the lifespan of the character. In this game, one can potentially survive to witness the discovery and application of rejuvenation therapies based on the SENS approach. Also, there feature such technologies as nanorobots, AI assistance, some possible events include natural disasters, world wars, pandemics, also an AI singularity, and all of those affect the probability of survival from one year to the next. I think the importance of this kind of game is that it offers a concrete way for people to conceive of the transition from here to there, from our current lifespans to the arrival of longevity escape velocity, and also to understand that it will not be an instantaneous transition. Rather, it will be through a gradual sequence of steps that people's life expectancies will improve. Finally, games are entertaining and they can draw in a much larger audience than other possible means of communicating the LEV concept. So what do we need to make this game happen? Essentially, the logic of the redesigned game already exists. What we need is programming talent to implement it. So anybody with programming skills is welcome to collaborate with us on it. We hope to develop this game and release it for free to the world so that as many people as possible can play it and learn about longevity escape velocity in an interesting and entertaining manner. I have provided my email address here for anybody who wishes to collaborate and offer programming talent. Thank you very much. Well, thanks again to DDA for presenting that and thanks to Gennady for creating the video and for also writing his proposal in the document. Now, I don't know about you in the audience, but my head is slightly starting to hurt now. 
in a good way. Uh, the variety of uh, thoughtful, thought-provoking proposals is substantial. Uh, but I'm going to ask Didier to add yet more into the mix. The next speaker is also participating via video. That is Ilya Stambler, who has yet another different angle to share. So Didier, if you are there, can I ask you to find yet another video? And after that, by the way, we'll be back mainly to spoken presenters. Uh, normally it's Jean or... Ilya, uh, oh my goodness, I got the alphabet wrong, didn't I? Ah. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yes. G no, 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 I, I, no, I, I, no, no, before Jean. No, 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 right. that's fine. My bad. That's uh, my bad, my bad, my bad. And I'm not even. Okay, sorry, my bad, my bad. Um, just a second. You're right. We are disrupting the alphabet as well as disrupting everything else. Alphabet as well as disrupting everything else. So Thank you. A couple of moments for everybody to grab a breath and uh, get ready to listen yeah. more. Yes. So, yeah. Larger screen. Well, greetings, dear participants of the Techno Progressive Conference. Thanks for the invitation. My name is Ilya Stambler. I'm the chairman of the Israeli Pro Longevity Association called Better Seniority, the movement for longevity and quality of life. Uh, I hope I understood the assignment correctly. We were requested to uh, give some suggestions, some inspiring suggestions for the promotion of uh, progressive agenda, uh, something that uh, progressive organizations should promote. So uh, my suggestion is simple. Uh, the techno progressive organizations should uh, promote techno progressive organizations. What I mean is that in many cases, uh, some of our organizations, and I've been around uh, such organizations for many years, at least 20 years, and uh, I speak from the heart, that's what I see almost uh, every time, not always, but very often. What I see is that uh, our organizations are simply inefficient organizations, meaning they don't have a concrete uh, agreed vision. They don't have a concrete plan. They don't have uh, a concrete uh, set of actions, uh, a concrete uh, evaluation of their resources that they have, and uh, a plan to get more resources with the understanding what kind of resources they need to achieve the plans and the goals. Uh, simply, they, they drift aimlessly very often uh, from uh, one activity to another, and uh, there is no concrete goal in sight. Uh, that's a sign of an efficient organization. Uh, if it were a business, uh, they would probably be uh, out of activity very soon, but uh, somehow our vision inspires us, even though many of our organizations are, are not uh, working properly. So what I propose is simply to give more attention to our strategic and tactical planning and to understand what it is exactly that we want to achieve within the organizations, to gather together with the core members uh, and discuss uh, uh, strategic and tactical vision, not in terms of what we should do. Very often organizations stay at this level. What we should do, should we bring more peace, should we live forever, but in terms of actions, uh, what each member of the organization wants and can do and actually plans to do. I think uh, with such uh, optimization, with such uh, uh, strategic and tactical planning, uh, we can achieve much more and bring positive change. Sorry if it is too general, uh, but I hope uh, uh, some organizations will uh, see if it really applies to them and uh, will act according to their circumstances. Thank you for your attention. Thank you again, Didier and uh, Ilya. Okay. Techno progressive organizations should be better techno progressive organizations. Yes, a challenge to all of us. I'm talking of techno progressive organizations. Uh, who better to speak next than uh, James Hughes, uh, all the way from uh, the east coast of North America? James, the floor is yours. Very pleasant to be here. Um, I think the most popular goal of our community, the 
broadly, the techno progressive futurist community is the demand for universal safe access to safe and effective longevity therapies. Some of you have already been working on this for decades, such as Yulia and DDA. And I think there's a perfect, this is a perfect time for the launching of a collective initiative, political initiative for this project for three reasons. First, the, the retiring of the baby boom, which some of us are members of, um, and that has generated more attention because the baby boomers seem to have more um, of a focus on uh, healthy longevity. Um, also, the end of the pandemic has given a crash course in clinical science to the world. Some people learned more than others, but um, basically the world is ready to hear about the future advances of mRNA and uh, CRISPR and so forth. And finally, um, the science, as I indicate, is also maturing. So in terms of what the initiative would involve, it would first be a serious grappling with the demographic, medical, and political issues around longevity therapies, things like old age dependency ratio, the pension crisis, defining aging as a disease process, biomarkers of aging, and so forth. Um, next, we need to directly argue for public financing of, of longevity research, a rational clinical trial pathway, and access to these therapies through public health insurance. And third, we need to identify the existing organizations in every country that are already working towards these goals. I think mostly NGOs and think tanks, I'm not very enthusiastic about parties as a vehicle for this kind of activity, but um, work with and create coalitions with those longevity organizations. And just parenthetically, and I can talk about this more later, the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies is starting a project, not on this, but on the future of work. Um, and we just hired a postdoc to work on that in Boston. And we plan to have a conference for that in about a year and a half. So looking forward to talking to you all about that project as well. James, you've still got another minute and a half if there's anything else you want to add in there. Okay, well, um, I think, you know, in terms of the techno progressive aspect of this, um, one of the things that I would emphasize is the goal of re engaging with the idea of what the state's function should be in all this. Um, I think many uh, people in the futurist community have despaired of reforming, for instance, clinical trial pathways and imagined that we could do an end run around that by doing this kind of experimentation in offshore platforms or Singapore or wherever. I would say really, if we want everyone to have access to safe and effective um, therapies, we have to engage with the clinical trial pathway and reform it. Definitely, they all need reforming. Um, we also need to engage with their biggest concern that it's only going to be accessible to the rich by making clear that from the outset that our goal is to make it accessible to everyone through universal public health insurance. And I think this would really be the techno-progressive angle on this particular campaign. Thanks very much. Lots to think about there too. Uh, you can read James's proposal and all the others in the uh, linked document. Next up is Jean Alamont de Breno. Jean, over to you. Thank you, David, and thank you, all the organizer of this day uh, and the attendees as well, because uh, I need all of you. In uh, contrary to some of the speakers, I am more oriented for a deliverable. And this deliverable is a software which could enable all of us to know where our R&D uh, about uh, aging. And uh, we discover with Didier and with Mark that there is no uh, software managing intellig artificial intelligence and big data available. So I really need your support to develop this uh, software. We are working on it. Uh, one very small startup has been created and uh, I am managing to get financing that it's easy. But after a word, I would like to, to provide it to you, all of you, uh, as a today member of this forum, and um, I tell you, if you vote for me, I will uh, provide it to you free. That's it.
Well, you've got another minute or two if you have anything else yes, to say. No, no, no need. Just you know that if you want to have a such software free, vote for me. Well, thank you for being concise and clear and inviting. And maybe there's a little bit of techno progressive bribery involved there too. Who knows? All for the good. Let's now move to Makiko Virgilio. Makiko, uh, you have the Hello? chance to speak. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Makiko Yoshioka. I'm a Japanese and a second year master of law student in France. What? Now I'm going to share my uh, PowerPoint. Uh, today, I try to introduce the current situation of transhumanism in Japan. In Japan, there is a Japanese transhumanist association, which is the Japanese branch of Humanity Plus. At the same time, transhumanism in Japan does not seem to be well known yet. However, I have two reasons to think that transhumanism will spread in Japan in the near future. The first reason is that GAFA or American startup, startups are becoming very ambitious in the field of transhumanism, creating new metaverse companies or investing in these industries like Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. Given Japan's political and historical relation with America, its political politics and economy can be influenced by those challenges. Nobel Prize Dr. Yamanaka Shinya has already been involved in an, in an American transhumanism project. Because of his research on IPS induced pluripotent stem cell, this cell is considered useful for longevity. And he will participate as a volunteer consultant in Altus Labs, a startup for achieving longevity where Jeff Bezos invested too. This event will give a huge impact on Japanese society. The second reason is related to the era of super aging in Japan. In 2020, the percentage of people over 65 was about 28%, the largest in the world. At the same time, because of super aging, the cancer rate is high in Japan. Therefore, a radical solution for this sickness will be needed and a new technology can greatly help to cure. In such circumstances, the social requirement for robotization is already increasing especially in the field of social care for elderly people. This will, this will be the reason for developing Internet of Things and probably heading for the Internet of Body more quickly. The artificial worms had been examined already in Japan. The purpose of this idea is to save premature babies or women who, because of medical reasons, do not have a worm. Recently, studies said that artificial warm will resolve a super aging society as it releases the women from the burden of pregnancy and the delivery. However, this idea of an artificial warm is not ready to use. The rapid, the rapid spread of transhumanism is facilitated by the cooperation between countries and laboratories. Japan's particular, particular situation of demography will definitely faci facilitate the spread of transhumanism. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Makes me want to visit Japan again as soon as the airplanes are flying. Yes. Uh, <laughs> next up, uh, I want to give the microphone to Mark Rue. Mark, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, David. Um, well, 
for uh, my personal proposal that could inspire positive and future-oriented people or organization, as we were saying. I think that now that our efforts to attract fundings and researchers to longevity have, have begun to bear fruit, we need to pay more attention to popularization, popularizing the pros, prospect of moral enhancement. Um, many of you, especially those uh, who consider longevity to be the top priority, feel that there is still uh, such a long way uh, to go uh, before the necessary efforts will enable us to overcome aging, that uh, you must continue to devote all your energy to this uh, great project. Nevertheless, I invite you to reflect on the role of a vanguard like ours. Indeed, uh, longevityism has already found powerful relays in the economic and scientific and even some politics spheres. Things are moving slowly, but I think there are almost irreversible catches. It may take a long time because mentalities evolve slowly, but I think the battle for longevity is well underway. So our vanguard can begin to turn to the other great goal of transhumanism, which I think it's moral enhancement. Uh, for once, we have ensured that we live much longer in good health, even in youth. Uh, will this be enough to improve the level of happiness and harmony in our societies? I don't think so. History has already amply uh, demonstrated that increasing longevity does not change the predisposition of humans, dominance, xenophobia, aggression, et cetera, aggressivity. It remains stuck in his prehistoric ganger, which condemns him to repeat the same mistakes. As long as we do not allow humans to change this behavior or predisposition, sorry, predeterminations, I think that nothing will ever change. It is therefore necessary to start prioritizing our efforts to develop the cognitive sciences and to do everything possible to ensure that their developments take place in the direction of greater choice for everyone, access for all to an improvement in their mental condition and of encouraging more solidarity. It will also be crucial that we work to prevent cognitive sciences from continuing to be put at the services to the service of liberticidal control and domination logics. On this condition, moral enhancements can be an unprecedented good in the history of humanity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, coming in early on time, another 20 seconds if you want to say something more. Uh, 20 seconds, uh, it's uh, not enough, <laughs> so uh, I prefer to stop there. Thank you very much. You are already morally enhanced, it seems to me. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we are going to Martin Lipovsek. Martin, you, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm a PhD student uh, from philosophy, and I'm working uh, PhD uh, thesis about life extension, and I'm president of Slovenian Society for Vital Life Extension. So first, a few words about Slovenia. Uh, we started society in 2017, and now we have um, around 50 members, um, uh, more or less active, and uh, it's slowly growing. So uh, I think it's positive um, to see how it's happening in, in our small country. I mean, we have 2 million people, but uh, there is still uh, going um, on uh, what's happening in the life extension field and what's happening in um, transhumanist field or techno-progressive field. Um, so, and then uh, I will speak about my proposal. Um, I think that the problem is that some people believe that life extension is just, um, extending a few additional years of life and this is all and it's not really interesting but i find it extremely interesting because i think it will uh, help us <clears throat> to advance not just um, economically or health wise but also so-called spiritually what i mean by, by spiritually um, is what i will describe now in three examples so first example is uh, first example is by 
James Troller Bernardin, who are saying that um, with uh, life extension really developing, we will all fight death and not each other. And I think that this is like a spiritual um, step forward, like uh, also moral enhancement for us to, to find a common enemy that is not a human, but it's some inanimate process in the nature. The second um, step forward is um, what I've uh, seen Peter Thiel, uh, who talked about that our Western society partly uh, made peace with its decline. You know, we are talking about decline of the West, also in humanities, we, are, we, ha we can read books and articles about decline and so on. Um, and techno-progressiveness and, um, and life extension is a spearhead of this, uh, can actually uh, show the opposite trend um, uh, of this decline to like new renaissances, if I can say like this. And thirdly, I'm also in my PhD now um, thinking a lot. Um, and in the moment I'm in the, um, I'm thinking about the idea that also um, our ways, uh, how to live life will change when we will live much longer as have perspective to live much longer. For example, um, with perspective of very long lives, um, we might have clearer vision what is important for us and therefore less procrastinate on the crucial and most important parts of our lives. So um, I will probably speak about this more in the future, but now I can just um, present it like this. So to conclude, I have around uh, 30 seconds more. Um, Thomas, Hawkes, Thomas Hobbes described life as nasty, brutish, and short. And I think that it is not just uh, bodily um, like this, but also spiritually, um, we are close to this. And I believe that uh, changes uh, of uh, technology and science and society will also help us to uh, overcome and rise above our current state and achieve the better one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Lots to think about there as well. We're going to have a very slight change in schedule because uh, Natasha is being pulled in uh, three directions at once, but she has a uh, uh, kindly asked if she can go next. We will come to Anastasia momentarily. Uh, uh, Natasha, are you there? You said you were ready to speak. Yes, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you so much, David and Didier and Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. And I think what I'm enjoying the most is the, the passion that is igniting all these ideas and projects. And each one, I think, is unique and needed. That goes without saying. I'm not one to vote on who's best and who's worst. I think all are valuable. But our ideas need a foundation to form the projects to bring them about. And here's the issue. Projects need to be generated. They need fuel, they need power. And without that, they're not going to get off the ground. And that's one of the, the, the core issues that we all face continually. We've got the ideas, but how to get them off the ground. Natasha, Here. your screen is blank. Is that oh, sorry, uh, so forgive me. Yeah, oh, it's blank, oh, sorry. We can see this you now. This is my computer. I'm, I'm, I'm here in the hotel, just catch as catch can, so forgive me. All right. Do you want me to start over or just pick up? No, just continue. Thanks. Okay. So bottom line, the most valuable issue that we have is the power to fuel these ideas, to bring them, to generate them to fruition so that our projects can get off the ground. And so that valuable issue is fuel. Fuel is power. Power is knowledge. And that's what I'm pitching here. The intervention project I'm pitching without a question or a doubt is the knowledge accelerator. And I think this is something that we all have and we can use within each one of our projects. But the fact is I've already created it and I just created it for this event. Specifically, I have been working on the transhumanist studies. It's been going for many months now. I've had hundreds of students from around the world. I've developed a team of these students. I've got my academic PhDs who are the mentors, but I also have the students who deliver knowledge as well and help me carve where we're going. So the bottom line, 
education. Education is all about knowledge. And without knowledge, we can't bring these projects to fruition. And I think that's consequential, no matter if the project is dealing with uh, longevity sciences, longevity advocacy, um, mindfulness, um, what I call the, the ethics of fairness, uh, looking at the trajectories for the future, how we're going to get there. We can't do that really as transhumanists without lifelong learning and continually updating our knowledge base. It's something I do almost on a daily, if not a moment to moment basis, listening and learning and error correcting my own views so that I'm more open and um, actually more open, I would say, and hopefully a kind of person in looking at the diversity that we need to embrace and accept. The, um, the Knowledge accept, uh, Accelerator curriculum is diverse, but it focuses primarily on skills that we can use. These are hands-on skills. They're foresight skills. I have a master's of science in future studies, and I use these skills in my own work, but I think that we need them in each one of these projects I've listened to today. So the that based on basic four skills that I, I encompass in this program. They um, begin with the end in mind. This is basic backcasting, a very important skill. If you can't see where you need to go, you can't figure out how to get there and look back at how you got there and then make error corrections along the way. The next one is the systems tree. This is very basic graphical interface where you can see what the, the core change is going to be and all the variables that affect that change. And they are continually changing and you need to update your trajectory and pivot when necessary. The third was is environmental scanning. It's when you look at the environment to identify trends across social, economic, political, um, environmental trends. And this helps us better identify where we need to go by openly looking at these, these trends and um, uh, a conflicts on the horizon. And the last one uh, in this sect is uh, the scenario of framework to understand the drivers of change and how they disrupt and impact us so we can better, you know, develop our trajectories. And as seconds. Oh, as transhumanists, this is so important. So our methodology is this learning model, and it's a 50-25-25 split curriculum. 50% is, is the lectures that are developed and the teaching, the videos. There's so many videos and, and core ideas that are presented. The next 25% are students working and pitching their ideas and actually becoming the instructors themselves. So it's an interactive, uh, very modern interface for uh, academic studies. And the, the last one is where students are able to take their ideas outside this framework and bring it to other groups. Our students are in Africa, they're in Asia, I should say our learners, excuse me very much, are in Africa, Asia, North America, Central America, South America, and we're growing and expanding. And many of you here are in the program. And um, I up. really am excited about it. Thank you. Thank, you, thank you so you, much, Natasha. That's uh, great. So education, education, education are mm -hmm. the priorities, as a former British Prime Minister said. If you agree with that, then give at least some of your five points when you vote to these education projects. Next up, we are going to the speaking slot that was originally assigned to Mikhail Batin. Um, that has been taken by his colleague Anastasia Velikanova. Sorry for making a mess of your name, uh, Anastasia. The floor is yours. Uh, hello, everybody. I am project coordinator in Open Longevity and bioinformatician. And uh, here is my um, uh, speech. Uh, well, uh, in creating a cure for old age, we are not where we would like and should be. Uh, why haven't we achieved significant progress in the longevity field yet? Although about 17,000 biological articles with the word aging in the title are published yearly, we do not have any therapy that reliably prolongs life. Uh, one reason is that there are no worldwide projects in the biology of aging, such as, uh, for example, the human genome or the Large Hadron Collider. All research is conducted separately in academic institutions or startups and is mostly closed. With a great idea at the start, a company hides its investigations, but the capabilities uh, of one team are not enough to globally change the situation. Another reason is uh, that the problem of aging is highly interdisciplinary. 
Recently, some theories from modern physics have been applied to model the change of an organism with time. They consider the aging as an organism, uh, the aging of an organism as the dynamics of a system in the configuration space of some or mixed data, uh, for example, transcriptomes. Uh, these dynamics equations uh, contain the gene regulatory network as parameters which also change with age in different ways and interact with each other. This network uh, can be analyzed based on experimental data to understand differences in dynamics of aging between species and various interventions with drugs and try to learn how to manage these dynamics. So we need advanced mathematical models and AI algorithms to accumulate all research about molecular processes and identify critical genes or targets. Most importantly, we transhumanists should unite and create an infrastructure that would allow solving the problem of aging on a large scale, attracting the best specialists from different fields. An essential part of such an infrastructure is open databases. For example, our organization created Open Genes, the database of genes associated with aging, allowing the selection of combinatorial therapy against aging. And we are creating a database base with a very detailed description of drugs that have been proven to increase lifespan of laboratory animals for the creation of an algorithm for in silica molecule screening. And um, I will send you some links on chat with more detailed descriptions uh, of uh, all our projects. Thank you very much for your attention. Many thanks, Alexandria, Anastasia. Do you have anything else in the next uh, 30 seconds to add? No, thank you. <laughs> well, I uh, appreciate that. So there's lots of uh, overlaps you, uh, people can start seeing between the different projects, uh, possibilities for international collaboration. That's something we might explore in the later parts of this meeting. The next speaker is Miroslav uh, Radman, and I'm going to share his uh, video from my own uh, presentation, my own speech. Yes, uh, did you? Maybe I interrupt you very Short, just to say, uh, well, maybe before or after Miroslav, you we, you could uh, give the word to uh, Antti, who is uh, now back. Well, I asked Antti, Antti if he on. wanted to speak. He said he hadn't prepared, but he certainly, ah. uh, if Antti does want to speak, we will uh, ah, okay, okay. ask him to speak at the mm. end. And in case I've missed out any of the other speakers, but there is a presentation by Miroslav, then there is a short talk by Osinakachi, Osina uh, who will bring, I think, our presentations to an end. But if I have missed somebody, then they should speak up at that stage. So let me present now this presentation by Miroslav uh, Radman. Greetings from the Mediterranean Institute for the Study of Life in Split, Croatia concerning the theme of the meeting it is not difficult to predict that there will be competition between two approaches in prolonging life and health uh, in humans they will be in competition one is the uh, trans bionic or high-tech transhumanism of the silicon valley style and another is biological rejuvenation, is mimicking uh, in the whole population what centenarians and super centenarians enjoy today, a life between 100 and 120 years without diseases and without chronic diseases that bring about death. Now, what bothers me as a biologist with the bionic transhumanism is that it must lead necessarily to the weakening, to the diminution of biological diminution. The human body then becomes some kind of uh, chassis for different kinds of uh, 
uh, prostheses and becomes dependent on these prostheses. And somebody will be the owner of these prostheses. And I don't see a great joy of freedom in that. Unlike biological rejuvenation, the biological enhancement of the human, which is not a crazy idea. Such people exist. They are called centenarians and supercentenarians. It suffices to uh, learn what is the biological basis of resistance to all malignant neurodegenerative and other de degenerative diseases in order for the whole human population to enjoy the privilege of a fraction of population called centenarians. Uh, in that case, that would be human enhancement. Uh, it would maintain or increase even uh, human freedom to do uh, what, what people want to do. Uh, we know already the chemistry, basic chemistry of aging and of age-related diseases. It is corrosion of proteins, the molecules that do everything in, in life. We know here the predisposition to diseases, which is the destiny of all of us except centenarians. And it isn't too difficult to imagine research that maybe in 10 years uh, would bring about uh, conditions or uh, consuming of na probably natural molecules, which we know something about, that would make us all uh, centenarians, productive uh, and healthy at the age of 80, 90, and even 100. So this is my statement. Uh, I would vote for biological enhancement. And once one gets bored by the success of biological enhancement, then one could maybe look for uh, other means or develop other means, such as the uh, bionic, electronic, and chemical uh, prostheses of this kind. So let's see. I hope that the funding of research will not favor heavily any of these two approaches, that they can at least, in a fair competition, go in parallel. Best greetings and thank you. Well, thank you, Mirav, uh, Miroslav. And that comes, I think, to not the least, but possibly the last presentation from the first round. And that will be by Osinakachi. Over to you, please. Okay, okay. Uh, greetings, everyone. And it's a privilege to be here. And uh, um, thank you for your support and the opportunity. I want to talk on the topic, taking transhumanism to the grassroots level, uh, kind of a systemic approach. Um, you know, uh, when, you, when you come to Africa, there is a way we, there, there is what we call um, people's perception about Africa and there's a way we receive information here in Africa. A little bit of uh, translation of um, the transhumanist principles and the teachings um, to African people. Uh, I, I, I would like to tour the part of Frederick Nietzsche where he talked about flexibility in knowledge. And when you look at the African society, uh, you will understand that we are, uh, a reflection of our collective consciousness. And if you listen, if you pay attention very well, you will be hearing noises from the church and everything, um, make noise, a lot of noise um, here. And um, I love what uh, Natasha said when uh, she pitched her um, teachings directly to education, talking about education. And I'll take it up from there, uh, talking, um, explaining, uh, education as the integral approach uh, uh, in understanding 
and uh, translating reality of a people. So the African person, uh, to, for you to teach transhumanism or life extension to the African person, we need to take it back to the grassroots level. The grassroots level, just as when the church, the missionaries came to Africa, they had to take their uh, teachings to the Sunday school, you know, presented it to the, the, the little baby for the, the little child to understand what uh, they are talking about. So this little child, uh, when the parents tell the little child what they are doing, it will be difficult for you to convince them. So I'm not trying to say that it should be dogmatic, but we should take it to the grassroots level. There are places where you cannot go. That's why TFBS is there. We are reaching out to people going to school, going to farm school, teaching them, you know, talking about the kind of food they have to eat, the kind of life they have to live, and why life extension and the ingredients of transhumanism is important in their day-to-day -day life. So my, my concern is that we should have a more explanatory model of teaching transhumanism. And I've been going through some of the materials, the resources, and the teaching, the syllabus that uh, the video designed. I love it so much. I've been taking my time to master it and see a way of explaining it to the younger generation. If you are using high vocal, people might not understand it. And it's not all about teaching all these things. Uh, it's a knowledge need to at least generation. And for it to at least generation, you must learn how to translate it to the younger generation. So that is all I have to say uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you. Prioritizing uh, education for the younger generation with clearer vocabulary so our message can indeed reach everybody. That is a great vision too. Thank you so much. I think everybody who said they were going to speak has spoken, except for one or two who seem not to have joined the meeting for some conflicts. And unless somebody I've missed, then we are shortly going to take a break because we all need a bit of time to recharge our batteries, maybe get some uh, uh, transhumanist nutrition, uh, coffee or whatever. But before that, there are a few quick announcements and we're going to hear from uh, Mark uh, about the future. And we're going to hear a bit about DJ about what's happening next. Uh, we don't really want people to vote yet, because to be fair, we want to move from this initial phase into a more exploratory phase in which each speaker will have a chance to build and support uh, at one other proposal. And then we want to hear from the non-speakers as well before we get into a vote. If anybody is desperate to leave and does want to vote, you can put your vote into the chat now preceded by VOTE as explained in the attached document. But uh, ideally people can stay longer and explore things more fully. Mark, what would you like to say? Well, okay, uh, I take the floor just uh, for um, a few minutes and uh, I share my screen just to, to show you, uh, uh, well, uh, that, if you can see it. Uh, so is the, the fact that uh, from uh, some months now, um, well, um, um, French uh, Transhumanist Association is working on the preparation of uh, uh, maybe what can be the next uh, trans vision. Uh, and uh, we hope that, uh, Everything will be okay until uh, November. We have the, the dates 18, 19, and uh, 20. It's from Friday to Sunday. It will be three days. And the main themes will be, you can see, diversities of transhumanism. Uh, I have maybe just to uh, precise that the, the, the scope, it's uh, not uh, uh, to have uh, some, I don't know, uh, any fights, but um, the, the, and on the contrary, the, the, the one scope, it's to show that we are absolutely able uh, to speak about uh, what our, is our diversity is, he, he is and uh, uh, what the, the, the fact that um, a transhumanist movement is a movement uh, which is very open and uh, there is a lot of things uh, about uh, we, we are not uh, always, uh, we, we, di we don't ag agree every time, but we are speaking and, and discussing uh, uh, all the time. And uh, that's the, the thing we, we, we want to, to show or the way we want to attract, especially uh, uh, French people in Paris, 
um, uh, to, to understand. Uh, so I already invite you to, uh, to take those three days to uh, grab it in, in your agenda and uh, uh, sure you, you will have uh, other information in the, in the coming month. That is, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Lock out your diaries now. Lock your diaries now. Didier, any comments before no. we take a break? No, that's uh, that's great. Uh, it's uh, really uh, very interesting, all these proposals. Uh, so uh, I don't have anything to add at the moment, except that I propose that we see each other precisely at uh, the, the also uh, 7 p.m. here in uh, Belgium. Uh, but yeah, you can change it for in 11 minutes precisely. So see let's you soon. take a break until the top of the hour. And if you have some uh, mental bandwidth, you can dip in to the some document of the proposals bandwidth. and you can start to think about what you would say in your 100 seconds when the microphone comes back to you. Let's take a break.
Ok. David, maybe we can start again. Hello, yes. Sorry, I had my, my, my headset off as I was... Sorry, I had my headset off as I was uh, reading some of these proposals again. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I propose that we don't do this in any alphabetical order. I propose that when people are ready to make a comment, they raise their electronic hand. And then we'll take people who are ready to say. And, and you raise your hand, depending on your Zoom app, you can raise it from the reactions button. And if there is nobody who is ready to speak, then I will pick people at random. So be ready. But I'm hopefully, ready. So who, 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 who is that? It's Angel. Angel. So. All right, you can make your comment. 100 seconds maximum in support of uh, features of a proposal. Okay, 100 seconds. The main message, I'm really happy. I'm really proud with all of you. Every day, all the day, I'm marking people. And I would like to mark all of you with an accent. All proposals, all presentations, all participants. Nevertheless, I have to prioritize to use my five points. So I am prioritizing according to the correlation to my proposal. It is education, education, education. Uh, I know that uh, Natasha is doing very excellent job. I am participating in her events when I am able to. I know that David had written excellent book. I do recommend to everybody. And his project is also excellent. And the third one uh, is, of course, business, uh, not business, uh, educational game in the field of longevity. So my evaluation, not saying that all the rest are not valuable, just the opposite, is two points to Natasha, two points to David, one point to Gennady. And I will put it in the uh, in the uh, chat in the chat immediately. So well done, Angle, for being decisive and doing something very difficult. Uh, thank you for your vote. So you don't have to vote uh, all straight away. You can uh, make a comment now and then make a decision later on. Who is ready to give uh, next feedback? Whose hand is up? Uh, Elena. Yeah. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank all the participants and everyone who contributed a proposal. They are all great. And the only reason why I have to choose is, you know, because the organizers demanded so. Um, since I am uh, for a very long time in this field and I am very much aware of the current problems that we have, um, my likings are more on the side of education and also uh, optimizing management practices in uh, uh, the organizations that are currently working on promoting longevity. Both those uh, aspects are incredibly important. So uh, that's, that's why I will give my preferences to those uh, projects. But I also wanted to uh, thank Makiko for participating and for sharing her ideas. And I wanted to note that Despite people often don't call um, what they are doing um, transhumanism, sometimes it just happens to be so. You know, for instance, the Japanese industry pr uh, producing animations is incredible. And you guys managed to, to prepare the younger populations to the future that arrives by, you know, um, speaking about robots, robotics, speaking about, uh, you know, uh, um, a, a consciousness that is living in a, a digital form and such. So, you know, uh, I, I would really like to have more discussions with you on this topic to just, you know, explore um, the opportunities that come from, uh, you know, the, the, the artistic side of things, right? The, the uh, cinema that is uh, preparing the mindset for the future, because this is important as well. Thanks all to all of you. 
Many thanks, Elena. The next hand up was by Mark. Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, really um, quick words just to, to notice uh, that, um, well, it seems to me that the, there are two categories of proposals uh, that um, emerge. Um, so some of those seeking to develop longevity in, in general, and uh, all those seeking to improve our organization in general. But uh, um, among the later, several, as uh, um, Angel mentioned, uh, concerned uh, various educational uh, projects uh, to achieve our, our goals. And it seems to me that the, this, this second category is, in fact, is favorable to all of our, our, our projects. And therefore, that it, it is in this educational project that can um, gather our consensus, maybe to, to be developed as a priority in, in the times to come. Uh, uh, to as we 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 were saying, um, as concrete ideas uh, or, or proposals that could inspire positive and uh, future-oriented people and organization like uh, ours. Uh, uh, are. And I, I think that even art, for example, it, it's just a, a different tool or one of the most uh, tool for uh, education. So uh, uh, as a, a, a teacher, uh, as I was uh, for a long time, I'm uh, obviously in favor of uh, all that kind of uh, projects. Uh, so, so thank you very much for all those projects. Thank you, Mark. To start off with, I'm going to prioritize the speakers. We will come to the non-speakers in due course as well. In that case, the next on the list is Jean Alamont. Jean, if you come off Thank mute. Thank you. Next. Yes, yes, yes. OK. Um, I am sorry. I have to go. So I will give you my vote. Uh, first of all, to Natasha. Uh, second one to Anton, then to Ila. So two points, two point, one point. All right. And again, I repeat my I repeat my thanks and congratulations for the organization of that. Thank you, and bye bye. Thanks for being brief, and uh, wish you. Bon voyage, or where, wherever you're moving. By the way, you don't have to give votes now. You can just make a comment. To... But thank you, John. Well, let's go to Osunakachi next. Look, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll be speaking behind the scene because we're having blackouts. So um, I, I would, my comment goes to um, not, uh, Anastasia. Um, I can't pronounce, sorry. So Anastasia, I really appreciate um, her presentation and she really talked about open source mode to longevity research and it, uh, it was appealing to me. And uh, I'll, I'll also restate my, um, my appeal to or my, my sentiment to uh, Natasha. She's really doing so well when it comes to um, providing educational materials and being kind to um, young longevity activist. And uh, I also thank uh, David Wood and for his availability and uh, um, kind heart towards young uh, researchers and activists. So that's it. Thank you so much. Many thanks, Sonakachi. Uh, any other speakers want to chip in with their comments now? In the meantime, and let's go to Gordon Silverman then. Gordon, you have uh, 100 seconds. Okay, you always limit me, David. <laughs> I am limiting everybody to 100 seconds. No, I, I will be very brief. I have a couple of comments. They were the fantastic presentations. Uh, my judgments will be with relevant to the, present the uh, proposals in context. I think we need to consider all of these in the context of the world we live in. There are some that are immediately uh, aware to me that I would uh, cast the vote for. Uh, not necessarily going to talk them, uh, mention them now, but uh, because I would like to read them uh, uh, on the link that David gave us. Gave us. So therefore, I'm quite. I'm asking for uh, some time extension or time limit plus. 
uh, can we assign perhaps two half votes if I don't if I need more uh, recommendations than the five votes will uh, allow me. And I will mention one other thing. I am a participant in something called All of Us Research. That is a, a, um, a plan that uh, enrolls a million people. They're going to uh, track my medical history and uh, as well as my DNA and see if we have a lot of data that could be used in some of the, I don't know where this, the uh, program stands right now, but um, uh, that's something which is ongoing and I thought I'd point out to the group. So I don't know if I've uh, allotted my time, but the question for you, Mara, is do we have a limit to looking at the proposals and can we assign perhaps two half votes if that's makes Did sense? You. What's your answer? You are the main organizer, the genius behind this meeting. What is the? I don't think we can cope with half votes. Can we? Maybe what? Maybe we can. Yes, and the spreadsheet will cope with point, oh. not point fives. So if you if you but want no negative votes, by the way, you can't get more votes by giving negative votes to others. So all votes have got to be positive. You, you have five votes. So. You have five votes, so it's uh, already you. You will have five votes uh, when when we will be voting. So, but God, Gordon wants I don't to see why you need to. Vote. Gordon is desperate to vote for more than five, uh, but that makes things hard. Uh, okay, no, well, you have to choose. So I, I will also I will also take my uh, hundred seconds to say, like everybody, that uh, all these uh, proposals were great. Uh, I, I will tell you since uh, I had the proposals a little bit before you, uh, that I asked uh, somebody to, to read the proposals without knowing uh, who was behind. And uh, yeah, I was uh, positively surprised that to see that uh, uh, the preferences were going to uh, people who were quoted already today and who uh, are the most well known. And also that, uh, yeah, there is no bad proposal. But no, I will say my favorite proposal is concerning uh, longevity and is the proposal from uh, Michael and Anastasia uh, because um, um, it's very uh, concrete. It's something, um, well, to be honest, something I, I was thinking to propose uh, uh, some years ago, but I didn't know it uh, It was existing already. So I think this, this idea of uh, let's say, open um, development of uh, resource and uh, sharing of, uh, of um, knowledge and data is very uh, important. And you have uh, Anastasia and Michael already uh, one website for this. Um, uh, so it, um, it needs to be uh, su support to, to get more support, uh, in my opinion. That's Thank you very much. Anastasia. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much uh, for all proposals. It was very, very interesting for me. And especially I was very surprised that there are so many uh, longevity organizations, the very big ones. About, uh, so I, I really had no idea about organizations in the UK and what is happening. Uh, and uh, I really liked um, Angel Marchev's uh, presentation uh, because, um, well, uh, when I was uh, trying to engage in one of our projects, some mathematicians and um, uh, guys uh, from physics department, I went there to uh, tell them story uh, and to tell them what, how can they help us. And they were really surprised that uh, actually the, the aging is the problem and the, this is what they can also try to solve. So they, uh, they just didn't know about such a task. Uh, and um, so I think this is very important to actually tell students about that uh, and uh, tell students from different departments how they can help. And uh, I also, uh, and uh, Felix uh, Worth, uh, told about uh, longevity parties 
and uh, this is also uh, quite um, the, the, this is also very new for me and i think yes uh, because uh, this is great because uh, governments uh, have uh, most of the money uh, and uh, inspiring uh, the governments to um, to pay attention to the problem of aging uh, is really important because actually um, we sh we need to so 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 somehow show them how the economy of uh, people who live about thirty years old is more is better than uh, the current one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lots to think about there too. I think this conversation is getting richer and richer. No hands are up at the moment. Uh, and that, who is uh, ready to offer their opinions next? Is that that's an applause hand, Natasha? Oh, no. oh sorry. Well, I'm okay. applauding everyone, but I'd like to hear hand you Okay, <laughs> great. The floor <laughs> is yours. You. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm not voting. I'm not going to say my voting yet. But what I want to do is acknowledge those who talked about the mind and fairness and morality. And while I prefer to use ethics in a form like this, the morals, because morals are personal and ethics are more something that is, is something you can vote on or build legislation on. Um, I do value that so much because in the transhumanist community, as diverse as we are, we're all are going in this, you know, trying to get up the same, over the same hills and into the same valleys. And it's so important to be mindful of each other and to stop gossip immediately and not to engage in the wokeness of disparity that is bringing some people down and um, clickbait. And I think that the, under, the underlining sentiment I received in reading the proposals on uh, like um, Adam Ford's proposal and some of the other proposals that dealt with uh, morality and, and goodness are so important to think about. The second point I wanted to make is longevity. Having been in the field of longevity for four decades at least, actively uh, producing projects and, and um, teaching it and speaking about it, one thing that I find missing so much, and this goes to education, is knowledge that many of the, the pitches, the initiatives here were so valuable concerning longevity, whether it was um, a PAC political positioning or uh, an organization or a specific directive, what is needed in every single one of them is the knowledge of what the right hand is doing from the left hand. What is going on? One speaker said, and I don't remember, that there's not enough therapeutic research. Well, Greg Fay just had a breakthrough in the therapeutic research that some people here participated in. So we need to know what the other people are doing so that we can have this resource of information when we're talking about longevity and trying to negotiate for better laws to protect life extension, that we have the, the as current up-to-date information knowledge as possible to better assess and better deliver a solid positive argument for longevity. And that's all I wanted to say on that. So thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha. And nobody is ready to go. Let's, everybody wants to spend a bit more time thinking or reading. Any of the non-speakers are welcome to put their hands up as well at this stage. Gordon, your hands up again. Well, since nobody else is ready to speak, you can uh, you can go again. Yeah. Uh, ex I'm going to ask your permission, David, uh, because as you pointed out, no one has uh, uh, put forth something. Uh, and I will tell you a little bit about my work over the past 60 years. Uh, I actually introduced the your brain is it, it this is cognitive science as it but it has pertinence to what you're talking about in a way because you're all looking for sounds to me that you're trying to find a way to understand how we think basically how humans think uh and uh back in 1970 i guess or maybe it was 1980 i collaborated with a 
a, a physician who was working in rehabilitation and he uh, what he did is he did a strange thing to people who had suffered stroke he put electrodes on there uh, often uh, associated with a, an arm which doesn't function work below your neural pathways are intact uh, some some lesion in the brain has caused the failure of communication and he showed them what uh, what their muscles were doing on a strip chart recorder. Well, they couldn't make a head or sense of, of that because if you know what a strip chart recorder of EMG looks like, uh, you would uh, you would know that it didn't make sense to them. So he came to me, said, could I, because I, I was trained as an engineer, he says, is there a way to uh, give them information they would understand? And what I did is I measured, it's a very simple comp uh, computation. I measured uh, the effort they were making rather than the, what the uh, muscles were responding to. And uh, we displayed it on an oscilloscope and he started treated pa treated patients and he's done, he did remarkable thing, particularly people who suffered from acoustic neuroma where they often oh. cut the- uh, I'll have to hurry you, uh, sorry, Gordon. It's, uh... If you maybe wind up in 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, anyway, it, it, uh, we tried to uh, sell it in the, uh, in the marketplace. And sometimes when you have an idea, it's not time. Recently, some people picked it up and it's now in the public domain and they're doing remarkable things with it. So if you want to look at some of the things that I would recommend this site, which is Jogo Health, J-O-G-O -O Health. If you want to look at that, you will find that's some modern... practical transhumanism. Yes. Thank you so much. We need practical transhumanism as well. Maybe you can put the link in the chat for those who missed it and people can follow up there as well. Now you can by all means put your contact details, Gordon, if anybody wants to explore that further with you. Uh, Jose, I think you I saw your hand up at one stage. Jose is still somewhere uh, in the entry to the aeroplane. Yes. Uh, yes. I think this is a fantastic meeting. I congratulate you, David, and uh, Didier, and Mark. And I think we have to keep on advancing our transhumanist ideas. As I said, I am uh, meeting with the top people of the government of Dubai. Dubai is quite a futuristic country. Even though it is in the Arab world, they are interested in these ideas. They are interested in longevity. And also, you might know that the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia created a multi billion dollar foundation to uh, push for longevity. It's called Evolution Foundation in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Evolution with H at the beginning, Evolution. And then also, the people in United Arab Emirates want to uh, do the same. So, anyway, we should have a lot of. Uh, activities, investments, opportunities in Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and other parts of the Arab world. So I welcome you all to Dubai next uh, year, probably February or March for a big, big conference on immortality in the Arab world in Dubai. So that, that's my point. And I am listening to everything. So congratulations and come to Dubai next year. Looking forward to joining you in Dubai next year and in Paris this year in November and goodness knows where else we will be gathering. Uh, let me offer a couple of comments myself briefly. Let's start my stopwatch. I think we can't get to a better future without some uh, reform of politics and the political structures. And so I am bound to support what Felix is doing in Germany and what James Hughes talked about as well in terms of what the state can do to uh, prioritize some uh, improvements. I also think we can't go forwards unless we improve the moral nature of humans. Uh, if we remain at our present envious, striving, depressed, egotistical, divisive nature, then we are unlikely to build a better future. So I'm bound therefore to support what uh, Mark has proposed. I also think we need to constantly review the effectiveness of our own organizations without uh, applying the best of management theory uh, in, an, uh, in a very practical way, we will underperform. And so I'm bound also to give some support to what Ilya Stambler 
was proposing. And then uh, finally, I think uh, the roles mm -hmm. of entertainment, the roles of non, art rien, bon. are very important. And so I am split uh, between uh, also voting for what Elena was proposing and what Gennady was proposing, ways of reaching a wider audience and involving more. So I still haven't figured out what to vote for, but these are some things that particularly struck me amongst many others, I have to say. 100 seconds, stop. Anybody else want to chip in to the discussion? Comments on the proposals, synergies that you've noticed, issues that you're worried about. Anton. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so in terms of uh, proposals, I uh, personally value something that uh, is more or less uh, clear and actionable. I mean, one thing, for example, let's cure aging. Everybody, everybody wants it, but it's not very direct. While, for instance, investigate art uh, in, like, in the way how we deliver longevity message, it, uh, more, it is more concrete or build a game or uh, some educational initiatives. And the second thing, I put a small clarification on the chat uh, to my proposal as well, as it was cut uh, also in the text, by the way, uh, that uh, even though I mentioned several issues, they have different solutions. Some case it's uh, about uh, informing people, in some case it's more about uh, supporting technologies. Uh, that's it on my side. Many thanks, Anton. Uh, and please uh, do look at what Anton has written in the chat for more clarification as to what he was proposing. We have to find a way to overcome the taboos uh, intelligently and wisely without generating an adverse reaction. So we need diff a different kind of skills in that area. I'm looking for more hands. Maybe everybody needs more time to read the rich content. Still quite a few speakers who haven't uh, come back to the table yet. Perhaps, Auntie, I could uh, encourage you to just give a little bit of an update from your part of the world. Initially, you, you had a chance to do so. And any comments on the presentations? Auntie. Oh, I've been more browsing the, uh, <clears throat> the these. Uh, how many votes I have? Five. Five votes, yes. You can give them now if you want, or you can uh, just give some general comments and then uh, write your votes into the chat later. Yes, as I joined later, I haven't uh, I, I had that much time to get that deep into to all these proposals. I've been kind of structuring here. I was uh, happily uh, surprised this Gennady's game proposal. So currently I'm putting two points there. That was kind of a fun and a real real project uh, then uh, uh, one point for david wood syllabus project and uh, i think Ilya was making uh, very good points points out i, I think I, I i support those so i, I will give uh, Ilya also one point and i'm still uh, i think i have one point left and I'm still thinking, should I put it on Sean Alemans and or, or Mark Rue, or how do you pronounce? So should I write my yes? Can, can you uh, write it uh, in the the chat uh, Cologne to be sure not to make any mistake? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. And if nobody's looking, I, you might slip in 0.5 votes for these last two if you really can't decide, Auntie. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hope Didier didn't hear that. David Orban. Yes, uh, thank you. So uh, my comment and remark is not about every uh, or any uh, single proposal, but uh, a, a real thank you for the richness and the dedication and the uh, uh, contribution from, from everyone. But in particular, uh, I am eager uh, to see the uh, voting and the attribution of the number of votes uh, uh, to be uh, greatly uh, expanded. 
Uh, I think that uh, the issue of uh, coordination uh, together with the issue of uh, uh, understanding and learning, which I prefer rather than education, uh, is uh, uh, a main challenge we have. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the biggest challenges of humanity, um, climate change, pandemics, and uh, uh, the uh, ability to maintain uh, peace and resolve international conflict, are evidently impossible to be addressed by the, the current representative uh, democracies by nation states. We, we need an ability to, to scale our co coordination and consensus building uh, beyond. Now, uh, the technology of DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, is uh, experimenting uh, with uh, uh, such kind of participation. Uh, and uh, it also tries to understand how uh, to evolve um, tools of participation that can uh, maintain uh, the kind of attention and the kind of uh, active uh, enthusiasm that is required. So, uh, uh, David, uh, I commend you for testing it in a little small scale with just five votes. Uh, but of course, this is the starting point, and I hope that uh, the techno-progressive and transhumanist uh, uh, communities will embrace uh, these exciting new tools of governance and coordination too. Thanks so much. Uh, on the subject of DAOs, I agree with, we should be exploring them too. I hope to explore DAOs at a forthcoming London Futurist event to see what they might offer. and. Uh, the Vita DAO seems to be doing some very interesting work indeed. So let's see what we can learn from that. Uh, Adam, uh, if you are still there, I may encourage you to come yeah, back on the screen. Uh, you are heroic. Uh, oh. Amazing. I hope you don't have a busy day ahead of you. <laughs> uh, give mm. you I give you a bit of time to draw your thoughts together and share them with uh, okay. the group. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I've I mean, I think I first heard about moral enhancement um, from James Hughes, who didn't talk about this, or somebody like you. Yeah, but I, I found out very quickly that Julian Savalescu, who's also an Australian from Melbourne, um, was pioneering this idea, uh, or was one of the people doing it. Um, and I, I found it really interesting because um, at the heart of the issues with our ability to coordinate is um, I think comes down to our ability to make sense of ethics. So I, th I think it's important that um, if we're all going to sort of uh, move strategically um, and collaboratively into the future, uh, we, we need, um, I guess we should, I, I'd, I'd hope that we can all elevate to become more moral and, and ethically capable of doing that. It's far too much, dis or, um, I guess, uh, um, yeah, uh, far, far too many, um, I guess, what I'd say, morally suboptimal um, strategies for surviving <laughs> in the world uh, these days. Um, yeah. What else? I really like James Hughes's proposals. I think it's very eloquent and is doing a lot with IEET. So I'm thankful for that. And uh, I just recent last night, um, or actually today, oh no, yesterday, yeah, because it's the morning. I went, I went and saw Patricia Pacini's uh, talk on her art. Does anybody know who she is, Patricia Pacini? Yeah, um, and I went with Stella. So anybody know who he is? Yeah, yeah. So um, these are awesome artists from Australia who Patricia Pacini does really lifelike um, human animal chimeras, uh, make sculptures or, or organizes sculptures to be made in there. They're fantastic. Uh, and she just spoke about like really beautifully about her work and I'd never seen her speak before. So it was a, a really nice thing to do. So yeah, I'm on board with the art as well. That's it. Thanks. Moral enhancement, art, and more. And you gave your votes to James Hughes, Mark Rue, and Elena Milova, as I see in the chat. Yeah, I think I think moral enhancement doesn't get enough attention. 
I think it, it's it, it it maybe needs to be rebranded, <laughs> but I think a lot of people think um, it mean it means some form of imposition of moles, uh, sort of yeah. And yeah, uh, I, I I think it yeah it needs a softer touch, not necessarily a a, a, a provocateur's sort of. I mean, I, can I say like something which is sort of couched in a way which is more easy to swallow than some of the literature out there. Um, some right, of the existing because people are afraid. Are argumentative. Yeah, yeah, and and people say. are afraid of what this moral enhancement might do, that we might be locked into something that uh, seems good, but is actually suboptimal. So that's yeah, a that's hard right. question. Elena. Well, don't, yeah, sorry, I'll finish. That's good. No, we'll put your hand up again later if you want, Adam. Oh, Let's okay. turn to Elena. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I, I wanted to thank everyone who brought to the table the topic of your microphone. Your sounds a bit strange. Let's give Elena a moment. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Is that better? Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so, sorry. Enhanced. Windows. Windows is is crazy. All right. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone who brought to the table the topic of uh, moral enhancement, and I just wanted to, you know, give my, my five cents. So, uh, uh, as you may know, I am behind of the um, uh, communication strategy of Lifespan.io, and I also was working uh, most recently on a project of uh, the ethics code of longevity journalists just to provide a, a, a template for everyone who is covering aging research for how exactly one should communicate with the general public about it. And uh, behind this uh, was my research of various sociological studies explaining how people perceive those things, how they respond to the topic of life extension when it's framed in different ways and such. Uh, and I also, as, as I was you know, progressing through <coughs> the studies, I was also uh, speaking with a lot of people and I tried to understand the psychology behind that uh, perception, this perception, this reaction, that reaction. Uh, so now I think, um, you know, moral enhancement can technically happen on its own if we prepare the ground for it, all right? Because uh, if a person does not know enough about the future of about, about the positive potential of technologies, they will be naturally afraid, right? The future shock is going to be there. Uh, then if people have psychological problems that hold back their psychological develop, de development, their maturation, their self-actualization, naturally those you know traumatic experiences that they had, um, their traumas are going to be, you know, um, uh, changes their perception uh, and, you know, painting the world in more negative um, colors. So when they will be um, meeting uh, new ideas, new technologies, obviously they are going to be more prone to be afraid of them than embrace them. So that's one more aspect, psychological preparedness, right? And then uh, there are, uh, there is competence, that also is a factor when uh, a person perceives something as good or bad, right? If they are good at something, naturally they will perceive this something, this activity or this lifestyle as something good. So before uh, accepting things like rational biohacking or something, people have to know how to do that in a good way, how to extract positive results from those activities before they can completely embrace this and completely embrace the idea of radical life extension. So that's one more factor, competence. Um, and then uh, the positive life conditions is also a very important um, element of the whole picture because when people have very poor living conditions, when they only think about you know, how to get to the next day, how to make the ends meet, obviously it's going to be very difficult to discuss with them any sort of you know, breakthroughs in science and how the world can be tomorrow and such, because they are so stressed, they may not be able to even, you know, engage in those discussions properly and, and uh, evaluate those um, ideas. So working in the direction of solving global problems, many of uh, those problems have to do with poor living conditions, will naturally contribute to elevating the consciousness of people and allow them to be a part of this dialogue in a more, you know, positive, way. 
but that's not all, because even if we solve all those things, we still have our biological limitations, our reptile brains that prevent us from, you know, um, holding back the negative response and evaluating the field first, evaluating the idea first before giving out um, a, a, a negative reaction, right? Uh, and we cannot really, we can't do much about this. I mean, psychology can be uh, one of the solutions, you know, psychological competence and such, uh, uh, but it doesn't solve everything. And th this is where I think cognitive uh, sciences come into place. And I am really looking forward to having a way how we can, you know, maybe engage new technologies to help us self-regulate and develop more um, rational assessment uh, skills for all those things that are about to arrive. I would really like to see more projects, um, you know, going in this direction um, in the future. But until then, I think uh, the main things that we can do as a community to promote those goals and, and uh, help more people to embrace those ideas like transhumanism and healthy life extension is primarily still by, by education and creating this you know, positive container space where they can, you know, digest those ideas properly and accept them and, and move forward with some projects. Just my five cents. Uh, just just a point, I, I uh, draw the attention, your attention on the fact that some of you are voting for speakers who have not proposed the text. We only vote on proposed texts, okay? You have the, the war list in the shared document. Uh, so take care for the for the vote. Thank you. Thanks, um, Elena. That was more than five cents worth. That was uh, lots to think about there. Let's move to James Hughes. Um, I wanted to first congratulate Elena. I uh, the IET started a program on um, visions of the future, where we tried to engage with. Uh, culture creators mm. who were writing about Zoom sur le transhumanisme. Hello, Jean. Could you mute? Um, we tried to engage with culture creators about the kind of Luddite uh, tropes that were common in a lot of uh, future-oriented fiction. And I think that that was a, ver a very popular program of ours. We had uh, interns who wrote about uh, wrote critiques of various things in, in the, on television and film and so forth. And uh, a lot of the of our issues are being debated in one way or another, uh, often very poorly in those venues. So I do think this is an, a very important venue. Also, the educational initiatives that have been proposed, like David's, um, I'm an educator. Uh, I think uh, the more we can uh, do with the educational side of this, the, the stronger we will be. Um, on terms of the moral enhancement proposal from Mark, um, I would just suggest that instead of moral enhancement, I mean, I, I started my uh, intervention by talking about the fact that I think longevity is our most popular uh, intervention, our most popular proposal. Um, and I think at the other end of the spectrum is moral enhancement, which is probably our least popular uh, intervention or proposal. And the way I would frame moral enhancement is really around uh, cognitive liberty, which is the idea that w emerging neurotechnologies should be judged strictly on the basis of whether they are going to hurt you and that people should be able, should have the right to use anything that's not really gonna hurt you uh, on their brain. And if we have that right, then that applies to recreational drugs as well, which is the principal battlefront right now, recreational drugs, but eventually to cognitive enhancement drugs and moral enhancement drugs. Um, and it would also apply to neurotechnologies like brain computer interfaces in the future. So I think if we frame it around the cognitive liberty, I think that's a very popular demand. If we frame it around improving people's morals, even if we say, look, we're not telling you what kind of morals you have to improve, but if you wanna improve your morals, that's not gonna be a very popular way to frame it. Well, more to think about there. Anton. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say, I mean, I have problems with uh, ethics and morals because uh, uh, my main problem with it is typically now it is used in an abusive way, like uh, people see new technologies and they say, okay, let's put some moral and then they try to restrict its development or usage uh, 
because it can harm in many imaginative scenarios. And in some cases, actually most of the cases, such thinking is really premature. You think that there will be a threat while in reality it may not happen. In the same time, uh, I like usage of uh, ethics and morals in a more proper way when we think not about uh, limiting use of something, but about opportunity cost, about uh, uh, virtual graveyard. How many people are dying if we don't develop this or this therapy fast enough? Uh, what we will uh, uh, lose if we will ban uh, animal intelligence enhancement or if we will ban human or animal cloning? And uh, I think that uh, a lot of push should be actually given to change the paradigm of applying ethics from restrictive to opportunity cost thinking. Thank you. Thank you, I would like to support uh, Anton in exactly that point. Actually, ethicism is a cover up of reactionary thinking against the science and technology optimism at the moment. It is the main enemy. That's why ethicists have sometimes got a bad name inside the transhumanist community and elsewhere. We have to uh, avoid that. Anybody else want to chip in? How about uh, Felix? We haven't heard uh, from you for a while. Are you able to offer some thoughts about what you've heard, Felix? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so, oops. Yeah, I, I would... Um... I like most of the two proposals of Elena and James. So I would give three points to Elena's proposal and two points to James' uh, proposal. Um, I really like uh, the idea of doing advocacy with longevity art. So especially, I think um, good movies uh, would help a lot. And um, I like that James talked about uh, campaigning for the longevity dividend and also argue for public uh, financing of research. I think that's really important. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Makiko, do you have anything else you want to add into the discussion? I'm sorry, I don't have enough. Um capacity of uh, understand uh, comprehension ah. and uh, <laughs> i'm sorry i just uh, i'm really listening sorry that's no problem your presentation ex well, earlier was excellent and you got lots of votes even though you didn't have a written proposal so uh, i, I try to read <laughs> that's all right thank, thank you very you. much anybody else who hasn't spoken yet and maybe we can any of the non-speakers, uh, Ben, for example, Ben Balweg, if you are still there, I wonder if you can share your thoughts about what you have heard. Um, I was very close to, and probably will be submitting my votes for uh, Ilya, all five of them. Uh, I just think that um, organizing our organizations internally and also interacting between organizations to uh, cumulatively reach the ultimate goal is a good thing to do. It's not like we'll get there hundred percent. We all got to keep doing our individual things as well, but I felt like thinking longer term, start with that and really get solid there and then we can move forward. Thanks for letting me be here today and voting. Well, if we give these five votes to Ilya, it moves him into first place in the voting. Uh, so that has changed things a little bit. Uh, I won't tell you the rest of the votes yet, but uh, that's a, uh, an, interesting, an interesting angle. Anybody else want to speak up? How about uh, Elena? Yes, go for it. Another five um, cents. Um, as you may remember, um, my talk at some of the transmission conferences was uh, focused on that very thing, uh, on the efficiency of uh, life extension and transhumanist organizations. I am completely on board with the idea that is proposed by Ilya. Um, I have a completely same opinion. 
uh, of uh, uh, how important this is for everyone who is running such an organization to be properly adopting you know good business practices it's not that non-profit management will be so different from uh, you know a management of a commercial firm right it's all the same things that you do you put together a team you define the rules you define the goals you give people the goals the vision and they work on it and then you work with them provide them with the resources uh in order for them to be able to reach those goals and one has to know how to do that especially it's important for the leaders sadly um, uh, it's completely true what Ilya said about the organizations that are doing just something uh, and they are not sticking with uh, good management practices and the results are, um, for the lack of better word, pitiful. Uh, so, uh, you know, just imagine that this energy will be channeled properly and, and uh, people will be able to track the results and, and improve constantly in everything that they are doing. I believe that. <laughs> If that was the case, uh, probably all of us would be immortal already. <laughs> so I'm completely on board with, with uh, what the guy is proposing. And if I'm able to contribute in any way um, to improve those, you know, maybe, maybe having some sort of... Microphone's gone again. I think we got the gist. Uh, you, you're very much supporting what Ilya says. It's in line indeed with some of the proposals you have made in previous talks yourself. Oh. Great. Uh, yeah, so sorry, uh, sorry about the camera. So yeah, um, if we will be able to put together maybe a, a club of uh, longevity entrepreneurs or something just to share those best practices, share the books that can form a proper mindset for a longevity entrepreneur, I think that it, it is going to be incredibly useful because in uh, advocacy and nonprofit management, you know, all the same rules apply. If you're not efficient, you're uh, you're not achieving your goals, and generally, you are not able to change the status quo. And that's what we want, right? To change the status quo, to introduce those technologies, to make the public understand how valuable they are, and eventually to change the world by removing age-related diseases uh, completely. So, uh, you know, if 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 we can work in this direction, that will be awesome. Thanks again. Uh, Malvina, uh, we haven't heard from you. I wonder if you have anything you want to share with the audience. Okay, I try to say, I'm sorry, my English is not very good. Very many good proposals, so it's very difficult to me to make choice. And I decided to spread my five votes to five participants. One vote to Anton Kulaga, uh, moral taboo cause many problems, so um, fight against taboo is one is important direction. One vote to Elena Milova, who I consider that work with media is enough importance. Um, one um, vote for Felix Vre well, sorry for I can correctly say this surname. Political parties is also important di di um, direction to make difference. One vote for Gennady Stolyarov for creation video game. I can see that this is interesting idea, but also have enough influence to mind of many people with in very interesting idea. Uh, and one vote to Anastasia Pelikanova. Structural data um, can make um, practical benefit in where um, right now was useful for practical work. I duplicate with my votes to chat. Um, that's all. Arma, what, what is the last one? Ar you mean Armand? Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia uh, Vikanova. I write this to chat. Oh, all right. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Zina, do you have anything you want to share with the group? Zina Holmes? Not to worry if you don't. Uh, how about Agbolade? Wonder if you have any comments to 
offer. Luke Bulladi. Not for the moment. Uh, well, we're almost winding down, I think. We've been going three hours. Uh, Didier said we could go for four hours, and I, I don't want to overdo people's uh, stamina. I'll propose to let the, uh, let's unmute. I think you have to unmute yourself, perhaps, Abuladi. Let's try that again. Ask to unmute. So you have to unmute yourself, I think, Abuladi. Uh, it's your control. No, it's not working. While we try that, let's hear another five cents from Elena. Oh, uh, was my arm still Oh, sorry, up? hand is still up. That's from before, was it? I, <laughs> I forgot to lower it. So that, that, let's uh, take that down. Well, I think we're winding down. Uh, Anybody who wants to vote, let's do it in the next two or three minutes. And then uh, we will feed back on the top four or five proposals without necessarily breaking them down in order as ones that the group mind uh, uh, tended to select. The host is not allowing participants to unmute. So I wonder why that is. Didier. Perhaps you could try to unmute. Uh, yes, I tried on my uh, I cannot un unmute uh, Agbola directly. Uh, I normally ask uh, Agbola to reactivate the mic, but probably there is uh, some technical problem uh, somewhere. So, so Sorry to hear that. But Didier, what's your own thoughts as the meeting has wound on? Anything you want to add based on all the wisdom uh, and provocations that other people have raised. Yes, so you, my, my first thing is uh, once again, uh, quite interesting. Uh, second, uh, you are a great animator. It was not going the way I was uh, proposing, but it was better <laughs> to have this kind of uh, uh, having uh, the votes directly. And uh, I'm quite happy that uh, uh, almost nobody was uh, saying negative things and so on. <laughs> Even um, Anton, you were saying something negative, but I, I agree on the, uh, on the ID itself, but yeah, it was um, once. Uh, so maybe we can uh, now see the uh, the the votes, uh, and uh, and I, I don't know to have a last discussion about uh, to to have a last round about uh, the proposals who have the most votes. I I, I don't know. Or maybe we can stop here, and we will. Um, give the information uh, after this meeting to all participants. Uh, don't, I, I don't know precisely, so to be honest. Uh, I, I think it's great until now, maybe not necessary to go uh, much further. And uh, I am uh, um, I want to also to thank all the uh, speakers who were uh, writing things and all the speakers who were um, saying things. Well, thank you. Uh, let's give people a few more minutes to vote if anybody hasn't. Yeah. So I don't think we got votes from Armand or from uh, who else hasn't got votes recorded? Maybe Mark, yeah. Mark Rue, uh, Makiko. Um, I know votes are coming. I, I see that. Uh, Martin Leipfusek. Yes, that that's right. Uh, my my vote was uh, ready, but I don't I didn't uh, write it. So yes. Just a moment. So we'll just give a few moments to have that last vote, and then I don't think we'll break out the top five in terms of order, but we can mention what the five top ranked votes uh, proposals were, just out of interest. Yes. Yes. And maybe this time when we have the votes, if somebody is thinking one of the proposals is a bad one, he just can say, but I don't think that we, <laughs> that somebody thinks that way, but just to know. So a few more moments. 
waiting for Mark and uh, anybody else? You can just put the answer straight into the spreadsheet, Mark. And then we can all uh, go about the rest of our day. That is. <laughs> okay. All right. So copy that into the spreadsheet as well. The spreadsheet behind the scenes in which we're keeping track of this. Uh, David, what is this spreadsheet? Say again? Uh, is it uh, this spreadsheet you are looking at uh, available for us? Uh, no, we didn't make it available. We might uh, do that later, but uh, I mean, some people may not like it broadly ex exposed to who they voted for. I don't know. So let me just in no order, just highlight the five proposals that had the most votes. Uh, Natasha's proposal about the knowledge accelerator, working with that, her, her new project building on top of the transhumanist studies. Then there's the proposal that was given by Anastasia, uh, together with uh, her colleague Mikhail Batan, for that uh, pr work that she's doing there. That's also in the top five. Also in the top five is the proposal by Mark Rue for moral enhancement and the proposal by Ilya Stambler for improving our organizational effectiveness. And then some of my own proposal has crept into the top five as well. So, uh, and lots of others uh, very close behind. So for what it's worth, there's a variety of different uh, types of things that the audience uh, has collectively said we should be focusing on. And uh, we should uh, have a think about Practically, how can we go forwards with these projects and indeed with all the other ones that people feel inspired about as a result of what has been said today? Maybe Mark, I'll give you a chance, Mark Rue, I'll give you a chance to make some comments as well and then hand back to Didier for the closing words. Yeah, thank you a lot. Uh, just a, a, a really quick word uh, to say that I have the, the, the impression that uh, one of uh, our goal that uh, we was uh, um, we're trying to, to reach from several several years, I, I think, for example, uh, in Brussels in 2017, uh, where we were trying to uh, to have some ideas and uh, to, to think about that and uh, to, to 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 take some some decision, uh, and it wasn't uh, so much. Uh, uh, a success, I think, in the the, the previous time, uh, because at the end everybody was uh, living with uh, different ideas and not uh, so come on, come on idea. And uh, by this way, <laughs> um, maybe uh, we are closer than uh, something like uh, uh, some some common ideas, because the, 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 uh, these ideas now are uh, proposed to everybody, and everybody uh, can do what he wants with those ideas. But uh, um, uh, at least uh, we have uh, some uh, direction, some common direction. Uh, some, uh, so uh, I think uh, this is a, a good point for, for tonight, if I can say. Thanks, Mark. And uh, Didier. So, um, yeah, to conclude, uh, um, uh, Thank you again for all for here being for being here. Thank you again for almost all for this your participation. Uh, and um, we you will uh, received uh, after uh, this meeting in a few days. Uh, well, first the link to this uh, meeting and also the text uh, uh, with uh, some comments. Probably we will see that uh, uh, David, Mark, and me, uh, and I, how to um, also maybe how to go further, how to discuss further, and uh, I like I want uh, to say again, like uh, Ilya was saying, like uh, Anastasia and other were saying, um, it's important uh, 
to discuss and but it's also important to uh, to, to do things uh, uh, to 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 be uh, active uh, uh, for longevity for transhumanism uh, for techno progressism uh, okay so um, goodbye uh, to you i know stop the uh, youtube and